I want to welcome those of you who are here in the sanctuary, just a handful tonight under the circumstances, and most of you who are watching online on our Facebook page, may God be with you as we meet together this evening. For those who may not know, my name is Herb Anderson. I'm the pastor here at Delisle Community Chapel. This is a joint service that we do together with the other faith communities in the Delisle area. And so I am very pleased tonight to have my colleagues, Reverend Lindsay Moan of the Delisle Vanskoy United Church and Roseanne Kilo representing the Roman Catholic community. We are also going to be hearing from the Sacred Sounds Worship Band, who have pre-recorded music for us, and from Katie Schlosser, who is going to be singing Silent Night at the conclusion of this service. Thank you also to Ruth Shostel, our pianist and accompanist, and to Craig Shirley, who's handling the technical side of things. So, welcome, once again, to all of you who have joined us this evening, whether here or online. Friends, God's compassion for us overflows. We come, perhaps, burdened with sorrows, loneliness, and sadness. We come seeking a place to set them down, a place where our words will be heard and our feelings honored. We need a place where we can drop our masks of good cheer and tears can flow freely if needed, and our faces can wear an expression that shows the care that we are carrying. Be among us this night, O oh God. Let your compassion heal us in this moment. Comfort us, strengthen us, care for us. Be Christ to us. Amen. We pray. Generous and gracious God, we look to you for compassion and thank you for your presence this night. Overwhelmed by our burdens, we easily forget that you never leave us alone and that your steadfast love for us never falters. By coming together, we find assurance and comfort that we do not suffer alone. You have given us strength to live through this dark time. Turn us to reach out to those others whose night is also long. Grant that we may be your healing presence in their lives by bringing them your compassion and comfort that will assure them that they do not suffer alone. Amen.
few words from Psalm 61, verses 1 to 4. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under the shelter of your wings. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 and 28 to 31. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 7, and verse 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you? that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Peace, I leave you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Friends, please pray with me. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christmas in a normal year is the busiest time for most of us. There are events to attend, gifts to buy and wrap, cards to order and write and mail, cookies to bake and deliver, donations to make to charities, work parties and secret Santas to take part in, Christmas concerts at school, gifts for the teacher and the bus driver, the list goes on and on. It feels weird to not be doing most of that this year, to suddenly be faced with a quiet Christmas at home, 
which many probably have never actually experienced. And I imagine there are a wide variety of feelings around this. For some, anger and disappointment at not being able to celebrate in the big family gatherings. For others, maybe a bit of relief, followed by maybe some guilt at feeling that relief. Relief at not having to face family or fake your way through it or pretend that everything is okay. Or maybe a mix of all of those feelings. I want to acknowledge that we're all probably feeling some kind of messy Christmas soup of frustration and disappointment and grief and relief and guilt, either on a rotating cycle or maybe all at once, and that that's okay. Christmas, especially the first Christmas after the loss of a loved one, can be really hard. And to be facing it during the stress of a pandemic without our usual supports and distractions of getting together with family and friends just amplifies those feelings. And so, as people of faith, we bring our broken hearts and our churning thoughts to God. The psalmist writes in Psalm 61, Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under the shelter of your wings. That word abide shows up in the Bible a lot, especially in John's gospel. And it tells us a great deal about the kind of God that the Hebrew people and the early Christians followed. You see, other cultures from that time period had other gods that they believed in. And they were usually distant beings that ruled from on high heavily concerned with conquering other nations, but not very invested in the lives of the individuals who worshipped them. The Romans believed that their emperor was the son of God, chosen to reign on earth with power and might and the full force of the Roman army behind him. This kind of God and this kind of king was far removed from the people and would never associate with anyone besides his highest ranking officials. So when the news started spreading about Jesus, this other son of God, this Messiah that the people had been waiting for for generations, it was shocking news about a totally different kind of God. A God who became human to abide with the people. A God who became human not to sit on a throne and associate with the powerful and the wealthy, but a God who came as a vulnerable little baby, born to a poor family in a stable, in a small village in the middle of nowhere. The first people that heard about his birth were poor and humble shepherds. A God who, when he grew older, spent his time with the poor and the marginalized, the outcasts and the sick, with women and children and people with leprosy. A God who, when offered the chance to sit on a mighty throne and rule over the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, turned it down a God who cared about the individuals who he met and who brought them good news about how their lives would be touched with deep love. This is the shocking news of Christmas that sometimes gets lost in the middle of the hustle and bustle, the shopping and the wrapping and the parties and lights. The news that God loved humanity so much that God became human in the most inconspicuous, defenseless way and came to abide with us. The news that God cares about our lives and our losses, our anxieties and our feelings, and offers us comfort and peace. When Jesus neared the end of his life and was preparing to leave his friends, he began to speak of what was ahead for him, and they became very scared and worried and sad. They had been to Jerusalem with Jesus before, but it was never like this. The authorities had been keeping a closer watch on Jesus, and it seemed like he might be arrested at any moment. They were concerned because he kept saying things about how his hour had come and the one who would betray him was near. They were on edge whenever they went out into the city, fearful that he would do something else outrageous to draw attention to them. It was an anxious time people's nerves were stretched just about to their limit. And then Passover arrived. 
They gathered together as they always did to celebrate, but this time felt different. They all seemed to sense that this was their last evening together, that things were about to change. It was an emotional time. Jesus reminded his friends that he loved them, and he tenderly washed their feet. Then he began to tell them goodbye. It was a speech that no one wanted to hear. They weren't ready for him to leave them. They loved him so much. They were going to be completely lost without him. They remembered all of the things that Jesus had done for and with them over the past few years. He had accompanied them on their journey, guiding them in new directions. He taught them about God's love for them, showing them examples of God's abundance in water, in wine, in bread, and in fish. He showed them that outsiders were always welcome, that women were equals, that those cast out from the community should be drawn back in. He comforted them. He gathered them together and loved them, and they loved each other, and now it was all coming to an end. But Jesus knew them, had spent every day with them for years, and he knew that they were worried. He could sense the fear that they had of being left alone without him, of being orphaned without a leader, and so he made them a promise. He promised that God has a dwelling place prepared for them, a place where they would abide with Jesus. This promise brings us peace when we are assured that our loved ones are with God, and we are assured that we will return to God's dwelling place upon our own death. But Jesus went on to make another promise to his disciples that brings us great comfort during our time here on earth. He promised that the Holy Spirit would be with us and abide with us at all times would bring peace to our troubled hearts, would guide us and love us and embrace us when we feel afraid. So this is what we celebrate at Christmas. Not finding the perfect gift or hosting the perfect party, not decorating the most beautiful tree, hearing our favorite carols, or even gathering together our loved ones over that turkey dinner. We celebrate that the God of all who came down from on high to abide with us in our messy world. The God who entered into our darkness to bring us light. Who came so that we may know we do not walk this road alone. The God who came to bring peace to hurting hearts and comfort to aching souls. These are the things we remind each other of at Christmas time. And this is what carries us through the rest of the year. May God bless each and every one of you and the road that we find ourselves on at this Christmas, whatever those feelings are that we carry with us. May God bless all those who have gone to heavenly glory before us, and may God bring each of us great peace. Amen.
The first candle we light to remember those persons we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their voice, their face, the memory that binds them to us in this season. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their lives in ours. We light this candle in memory of those who gave us birth, who nurtured us, offered love, and cherished us. We remember mothers and fathers, guardians and grandparents, and all our family through the ages. We light this candle in memory of those who have been joined to us in the great circle of family. We remember sisters and brothers, aunts, uncles, and cousins, those near to us and those far away. We light this candle in memory of those who have left us before we expected, those we hold dear and with whom we still walk in our dream. We remember children and grandchildren, those who leaped within the womb, and who danced upon the earth. We light this candle in memory of those whom we came to know through the eyes of love. We hold sacred the faces and memories of years past, of those who brightened our days and lit up our lives. We remember husbands and wives, dearest loves, and closest friends who changed our lives forever. We light this candle in memory of those who shared in our lives in many ways, who worked with us and made our lives more enjoyable. We remember friends and neighbors. We light this candle for those we do not know, O oh God, who, like us, have suffered loss, who live with grief, who long for peace and justice, who long for friendship and healing. We remember your people of every time and place. Lord, each of us takes our loved one by the hand and leads them to you, the God of love. Here we present them to you. Accept our love and thanksgiving as we entrust them to your loving care. We want our loved ones to be free at home with you. We ask that you save a place for us beside them. We ask that you fill us with motivation and energy in the days ahead when we feel like giving up. Remind us often of our true homeland when we are caught up in the desolation of the journey. Help us to find joy in the people, events, and the beauty of nature that surrounds us. Thank you for the gift each of these people has been to our lives. We want to believe that we will celebrate the treasure of love with them again when we are all in your presence forever. May this truth sustain us in the days to come. Take our sad and aching hearts and comfort us. Comfort us when we feel only hollowness and emptiness. God of sorrowing, draw near. Amen. The second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs with the security they bring, the loss of health in ourselves or in family members, the loss of joy and peace in our lives from the stresses which surround us, the loss and loneliness we experienced when our loved ones do not share our faith. As we gather up the pain of the past, we offer it to you, O God, asking that into your open hands you will place the gift of peace. Please take a moment to remember the losses. I invite you to name them in the silence of your heart. God of mystery, we turn our hearts to you. We come before you in need of peace, grateful for the mystery of life 
and ever keenly aware of your promises of guidance and protection. We want to place our trust in you, but our hearts grow fearful and anxious. We forget so easily that you will be with us in all that we experience. Teach us to be patient with the transformation of our lives and to be open to the changes which we are now going through. Amen. The third candle we light for those who experience a loss of direction in their lives. God of the Exodus, you led Moses and your people through the wilderness to a new land. Hear our prayer. We want so much to have a sense of direction, to know where we are and where we ought to be headed. But the darkness and the questions are with us. You ask us to be full of faith, to believe deep within that you are our signpost, that you are our wisdom and our guide, and to trust in your presence. Your words to us are clear. Do not fear. I go before you. God of our depths, we cry out to you to be our guide. Help us to, be, to have a strong sense of inner direction and grant that way me, we may have the reassurance of knowing that we are on the right path. Take our lives and use them according to your will. Take all that is lost in us and bring it home with you. Amen. The fourth candle we light as a sign of hope. The hope that the Christmas story offers to us all. We remember that God, who shares our life, promises us a place and time of no more pain and suffering. O oh God, whose spirit is known by those whose hearts are thankful and who makes cheerfulness a companion of strength, lift up our hearts, we pray, to a joyous confidence in your care. Guide us when we cannot see the way. Teach us to know that a shadow is only a shadow because the light of eternal goodness shines behind the object of our fears. Where there is love in life, teach us to find it. Help it. Help us to trust it and enable us to grow in the power of love. So may our lives bring comfort and encouragement to others. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, whose life is our light. Amen. We now light the Christ candle, a symbol of peace to all on earth. And we remember all who yearn for a word from God, all who gaze into the night sky in longing and in hope, all who listen for an angel song, as we light this candle, we remember the promise of hope that the Messiah would bring, and we pray that this light would also kindle a flame of hope within our hearts. We pray. Our loving Father God, thank you that your love for us never fails. When we experience grief and sorrow, your love surrounds us and holds us. In times of pain and loss, we rest in your eternal love. Thank you that your never-ending love holds us even when we may not feel it or even be aware of it. We thank you that you hear us now as we cry out to you. In our weakness, you are our strength. We find refuge beneath the shelter of your wings. Thank you that you have never failed to be present with your people, especially in times of plague, pestilence, and pandemic. You are the God of all comfort, the everlasting God. In the stillness, we wait for you. Renew our belief in you and in your Son, whom you have sent. Thank you that we have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for those we have loved and for those who have loved us. We are grateful that their influence will always be a part of our lives. We thank you for their friendship and for the encouragement and joy they brought to our lives. Thank you for the love they generously offered to us and for the love they graciously received from us. Thank you that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven for the times we failed those we love by our words and by our actions. We pray for healing of the deep wounds caused by angry words, betrayed trust, or abandonment. Thank you that all failure can be forgiven and forgotten, redeemed and released by your grace. We lift up to you the feelings of loss which we carry, loss of family and friends, loss of health and ability, loss of jobs and income, perhaps even loss of purpose and joy. Restore to us the joy of our salvation, and enable us to face the future with confidence and hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. These things we pray in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Following our blessing and the singing of Silent Night, we depart in peace. I want you to know that you are welcome to stay here in the sanctuary as long as you wish. And now, receive the blessing. May you go forth from this place carrying peace, knowing that you are loved by God. May you go from this place carrying strength, knowing that it is Christ who walks with you. May you go from this place carrying faith, knowing that through the Spirit's power, you are not alone. May you go guided by the light this day and always. Amen.
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth.